My name is Richard Moss. I'm a success coach in the Network for Student Success. There are four success coaches for our program. Myself, Richard Moss, uh, Mark Thomas, we have Marcus Montgomery, our program director is Kareem Moody, our program coordinator is Kimberly Blackman. We are all located on the main campus in Campus Center Room 105. Our other success coach is Mr. Derek Moore. Derek is located on the west campus on the second floor. So there are, again, four success coaches. We are located on the main campus and the west campus. I'm sure you're asking what our program does and why we are here. We are a federally funded program that works to increase retention graduation rates for African American males. That's what we do. We are here because prior to us coming here in January 2009, African American males at Plastic Tech were not graduating. This is not just a trend at PTC, this is a nationwide trend. African American males come to college, enroll, but do not graduate. Nationwide, two thirds of African American males enroll in college do not graduate. Put that in terms of 66%, 6 in 10 graduate. It's not a good number. At Plastic Tech, when we got here, the number of students that were graduating with either a tech certificate or a social degree or some other certificate was less than 1%, 0.9%. So less than 1 in 10 African American males are graduating. So our goal or our charge through the grant, through the college, is, is to increase those rates. I'm sure you're saying, how do we do that? Again, we've been here since January of 09. And what we do, we, we, there are three phases to increasing retention rates for African American males. We have case management portion, we have an academic portion, and we have a social interaction portion. I'll go into now, talk about, you know, saying now, so what, you know, what about the program makes it so great? I'll tell you a little bit now, <clears throat> excuse me, about why it's so important. Not just for African American males to graduate, but for students to graduate, period. <clears throat> if you don't graduate, you're not using your federal funds correctly. So in order to be taking those loans out, you get those payroll grants, you want to make sure you're getting full use of those loans. But also, it helps the economy. It's, it's, a, it's not just a plastic tip thing. It's a job market thing. It's an economy thing. It's economics. The more people that are able to be qualified to go into the workforce, whether it's a tech trade such as welding or auto body, whether it's getting your social degree in computer information systems and going straight to the workforce, whether it's getting your social degree in arts, transferring to a four-year college, getting your degree there, all those things translate into economics and helping the workforce. More educated workforce means more jobs, more jobs means more money. So at the bottom line, we're trying to help our economy grow. What we do is we take, take a student, <clears throat> you'll come into our office, whether you're on the West Campus or Main Campus, you come through the door and you'll be greeted by a staff member. At that point, We'll sit down with you, we'll ask you what your interests are, why you're at Plastic Technical College, first of all, is the biggest question we'll ask. And we have some of our students, the first thing they say is, oh, I'm here to get an Associate of Arts degree, or we're here to get my basics. So we dig a little deeper, and that's part of the case management piece. We dig in and we ask, what do you want to do? Because many students come to college, they do the application for PTC, and they click on the box that says they want an Associate degree, that's the first box. But really have no idea what that really entails. So we sit down with them, we ask them, hey, what do you want to do? They may say, I like working with my hands, or I like welding, or I like this. And it's easier for us to help find a uh, trade, a certificate, or a degree for you if we know what you want to do, versus trying to find a career based on what you signed up for type of degree. So at that point, you'll come to the office, and what we have, also, since we're a fairly funded program, there's a short application informational sheet that we get. We gather data. We gather your name. We gather your address. We gather what your interests are. We gather what you may need help in, what your challenges are outside of Plastic Tech. So we take all of that that also helps us in our case management. We also take that form and that's report to the federal to, to our federal grant, Department of Education. So we take all that data through the first visit. We review it, we ask you to come back for a second visit. On that second visit, that gives us time to have reviewed the application and get a really, really a feel of who you are and what you're interested in. So at that point, we can kind of figure out how to work with you to make sure you're successful in the college. We take that case management piece, we sit down with you for an interview, 
find out what you want to do. And each student is different. What one student may need, they may need uh, a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of, uh, of building up their character, building up self-esteem. We have some students, they don't need that. They need that little, they need a more push. They need that more intensive, hey, this coaching style, we need you to, to man up. We need you to really get involved. We need you to, these are your goals that you have set for yourself. So we sit down, we do a goal sheet, short-term goals, long-term goals, even medium-range goals. And those goals are anywhere from, you know, completing the semester, making an A in a course, making a B in a course, short-term goals, medium-range goals, getting through next semester, completing financial aid early. Long-term goals could include, <coughs> excuse me, graduating, getting a job, getting married, having children. So what we try to do, we take that goal sheet, and throughout the semester, you'll meet with the success coach, excuse me, <clears throat> you'll meet with the coach two to three times a month, once a week, to come to the office, business may, sessions may last 10 to 15 minutes, depending on what's going on. You may have something that's going on in the classroom that you need to talk to us about. At that point, we'll help you figure out what the best strategy is to make you successful. Whether it's going to talk to an instructor, or that's going to tutoring, or that's just coming to the office using our computers. Each of our office has a set of computers that you're allowed to use as a member of the network. It's one of the benefits. So you come in, we have the coaching session, and that's one of the things we expect from you. We always have the, the, the mantra with our students. If you come into the office, you do what you're supposed to do, you come to the coaching sessions, you take the advice that we're working with you with, and you do that, you're not successful, that's our fault. Because there's something along the lines that we did not do well. But on the flip side, if we ask you to do certain things, you don't come to coaching sessions, meaning we don't know when you're struggling, when you need help or challenged, if you don't come by the office on non-coaching days, just say hello to make sure you're going to class. If you aren't doing the things that we need to help you, we don't know when you're struggling. So at that point, it's not what the coach you know, didn't do, it's what the student, what we could have done better. Now, in terms of case management, we do some things that are a little intrusive. We will email you many, many times. We will call you many, many times. We will go to your class to make sure you're going to class if you are returning phone calls. Because at that point, if you're not returning phone calls, you are returning emails, we're going to find you because we want to know what's going on. We want to know why you haven't been returning our phone calls. Why haven't you been by the office? Because if you're not in class at that point, there's something else wrong. So we need to try to find out why you aren't going to class. Because again, the goal of our program is retention. That's what we do. Our goal is to make sure that when you come to our office, we're doing everything possible to make sure that you graduate. Now I'm sure you're saying at that point, okay, you've done this case management, you've met with me all semester. What else do you do besides that? Well, there's an academic side that we do. And that begins probably is going to begin in a couple of weeks. We'll let students get through the first two to three weeks of school, maybe six weeks, get their feet wet, understand what's going on, find the class, find the instructors, kind of get their legs wet. Because at that point, you really don't know what you need help in. But about six weeks down the line, we'll send out a coaching form that we'll give to our students. You'll pass those on to your instructors. Those instructors will in turn look at that form. We'll ask for your name, the course, what your current grade is, what it, what it will take for you to make an A in the course, and other notes, meaning how many days have you missed? How's the student doing in class? Do they need extra help, extra tutoring? That's our first check. That's our first real ability to coach you. Because based on that midterm checkup or six week checkup, we're able to say, okay, we need to put certain things in place. It may be you're struggling in a math class. Okay, we're gonna need you, we're gonna require you to go to the tutoring lab at least two days a week for an hour. That's gonna help you in turn be stronger in that class. We may ask you to talk to that instructor and say, what can I do to improve? At that point, we may even go with you to sit down with that instructor and say, hey, this student is struggling. They are really, really not comfortable talking to you alone, so we want to come with the student to help, you know, knock that bridge down initially. And at that point, the you know, student instructor will have a different relationship. So we want to go with the student if needed, say, okay, what does the student need to do? We want to make sure that there are no barriers to your success going to class, going to the instructor. So we get these midterm sheets back six weeks. We look at them, put some things in place to make sure you're successful. We'll come back another six weeks, 
We'll do the same thing again. We'll give you sheets for your instructors, text to your instructor, find out, hey, how is the student doing? Have they improved? Have they gotten worse? If they've improved, then we'll say, okay, this student is doing, doing just fine on the current course we're on. We won't change anything. We won't, we won't ask the student to stop going to tutoring. We won't reduce the tutoring they're going to. They're fine, they're on par. Let's say the student is still struggling. At that point, we'll go to the instructor. We'll say, hey, what do we need this student to do? This is the path we've laid out. Students going to tutoring, they're getting extra help, they're coming into the office, but they still aren't getting it. At that point, we'll work with the teacher to say, oh, poor instructor, what do we need to do? Is it something that the student needs to come see you about? Do you have time uh, during your office visits for the student to visit with you 15, 20 minutes a week to figure out how to become more successful in your class? And on the flip side, let's say that we do that midterm report. You haven't done anything we've asked you to do. You haven't been to tutoring. You haven't talked to your instructor. You haven't joined the study group. You haven't done anything to help you become more successful based on the things that we laid out or paths of success that we wrote out for you that you agreed to do because we don't do anything that the student doesn't agree to do. This is not a big brother, little brother. This is a coach, coach to mentor type deal. So we work together on a plan. We ask you to agree to this because we don't want to put a student in any undue stress. It may be a situation you ask them, hey, I need you to go to tutoring at this time, at this time. Well, I can't, I work, or I have a child to pick up, or I have something else. Well, we're gonna work out a time for you to get this extra tutoring. Maybe I can't go to tutoring. Well, we're gonna ask you to get with another classmate, form a study group. So there's some things we're going to put in place, a plan of action to make sure you're successful. And we do this throughout the semester. So the plan is by the end of the semester that you have successfully passed that semester. Now we know that some students still struggle even after everything we put into place. So at that point we'll sit down over the break with the student and say, hey, this semester we struggled just a bit. You did everything you could, I did everything I could, but there's something else that was missing. So at that point we may bring in another success coach. We may bring in our program director, correct Mr. Moody, and say, hey, this is the plan we put in place for this student. We weren't successful. What are some other things that we can do? Because at that point, it's a team effort. It's not just a Richard and Jasper effort or a Richard and Kevin effort. It's a team effort to keep you enrolled in school. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we've done all that, done the checks. Let's say, for instance, you are successful. Hey, that's great. That's fantastic. Put some plans in place, worked them out, did great. That means the next semester, we know we're going to start the same way. Do the same checks. If you need tutoring, put them courses. We'll do all of that. Another thing we do, we do degree audits. Because there are some students, again, enrolled in school, aren't really sure what path they should take to graduation. So we will take, after we figure out what you really like to do, get you a plan of action, get you a degree and a major, whether it's a tech trade, tech certificate, a social degree. We'll take your courses from your transcript. We'll look at them and plan out a schedule for you to graduate. And we'll contact the, the registrar's office, find out what courses you need. We'll write those down and each semester. We'll do a degree audit to make sure that you're on track to graduate. Because the goal is not for you to stay a plastic tech student. The goal is for you to graduate and either transfer or straight to the workforce. So those degree audits are one thing we do on your past success. There are some students who really don't know what a degree audit is. So we try to remove that barrier from you. We try to help you with that. So we have that degree audit on hand. And every semester, as we do the advising for the next semester, we'll look at what you took the current semester, previous semesters, and find out exactly what we need to do the next semester. What courses we need to take. Is it a course that's only offered in the spring or only in the fall? Do we need to do some shifting around of what you initially wanted to take to make sure that you're taking, you have the opportunity to take the course that's offered each semester? If it's offered in an off, an off semester, what do we need to do to put in that place? What course do we take or substitute? Do we need to go talk to the instructors or the dean and find out if there another course that can replace this course because this student is set to graduate? What can we do to make sure this student graduates on time? So that's the purpose of the degree audits. So we've done the we've done degree advising, we have that out of the way. We've talked already about some things that we do to support the student. Again, we do tutoring. Uh, we have a tutor in our office, there's a tutor on the West Campus. We also work with uh, uh, the Learning Assistance Center and their tutoring. And we, we work strictly with our students and say, hey, 
go to tutoring. Tutoring does help. There are qualified tutors in each learning assistance center on campus. The other things we have, we have link courses. Network for Student Success has developmental link courses. We have a uh, college seminar course that's offered on the main campus on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for African American males and one on the West Campus on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those, those courses are regular college seminar courses but with an African American spin to it. We talk about challenges and issues that are related to African American male success on campus, on college campuses. They're taught by Derrick Moore on the West Campus, our success coach, and taught by Marcus Montgomery, success coach on the main campus. The, those students do anything from uh, reading a, a book each semester that deals with African American male success. Uh, one semester they read The Pact, which was about uh, three friends in New Jersey who became doctors and they made a pact to graduate and become doctors. So that's an encouragement piece that we, that we work with. The developmental link uh, also is linked to other courses. We also offer a course, a uh, pre-algebra course uh, with an instructor uh, that, that works with African American students. We also have a, uh, an English course, the same thing. So all these courses are linked together for your success. And we monitor those courses. So if you're not doing well in one link course, what do we need to do to make sure you're successful in the other link course? So they're all linked together for your success. We also have the same thing going in the tech trades. We have a career seminar course for students interested in those technical trades. And in that career seminar class, you learn about how to make a resume, how to do interviews, how to present yourself and make yourself ready for the workforce, which is linked to other courses in the, in the tech, track, tech track side, such as uh, tech math, tech communications. So we have those classes all linked together as well. And they are monitored the same way as the, as the developmental link classes. We go by, we visit your instructors, we make sure you go in class, we visit with you. All again, all, again, all these things are together to make sure that you graduate. You know, we talked about <clears throat> study groups earlier. We also do our own study groups. Students in the network for student success form their own study groups based on their majors. The network has roughly 250, 275 students, all different majors all different degree plans, all different plans and ideas, but they're similar in some ways. So those students form their own study groups. We have students in the education field who form their own study groups. We have students in computer science who have their own study groups based on the courses they're taking. So they form their, form their own cohorts. So they form their own study groups. We also have what we call supplemental instruction labs. These are for those courses that are in the developmental track links. Uh, they get extra extra lab work, whether and it's an opportunity for them to go to the lab to complete their homework and get help with a tutor or some an instructor for a course they may have some, uh, a few challenges in. And this is just not the network is not standalone group. We work with other organizations on campus for student success. We work very well with the Trio office and Mary Case Snow and her staff. And again, Trio is a program for first generation college students. A lot of our students are first generation, so it works hand in hand. So that's the support service we offer, or work with, we hand in hand with. We also work with our science uh, department on campus. We have a program, a federal program, uh, the Lewis Stokes uh, Minority Participation Program. The purpose of that program is to increase the number of African American students, male and female, in the areas of uh, science, technology, engineering, math. So those students in that program will work well with uh, Dean Rains and his group to make sure that we are recruiting students who are eligible for that program. Uh, for that program, students need to have a 21 in math on the ACT or a 50 uh, in college algebra on the uh, compass test. So that makes you eligible for that program. The benefit of that program is those students who are enrolled and are eligible receive a monthly stipend of uh, roughly $200 for participation. Now it's just not a free check. Uh, working with the science department, they take tours of other uh, engineering departments, especially in Fayetteville. Uh, there's work in the lab that they do to help the professors, whether it's research uh, or making sure the lab is ready for the next day for other courses. They may even be asked to be tutors or instru supplemental instructors, uh, depending on their expertise in that particular field. So we we try to make sure that we that we're working with the students to make sure that they're fully involved 
and fully engaged on campus. So we've gone through the academic piece, gone through case management piece. I'm sure you're saying, well, where's the fun stuff that we do? Well, we follow Tinto's model of theory of retention. And Vincent Tinto is a uh, uh, professor in uh, Northeast, and he came up with all these ways to say, hey, what makes students involved? What makes them stay in school? <clears throat> and he's wrote a series of, written a series of papers and books that say the students who are engaged are more likely to be retained. So we have activities outside of what you normally would do uh, as a student in addition to student life to kind of keep you involved. One thing we do that we're flashing through now uh, on PowerPoint, you're seeing pictures of a trip to New York that we take. Uh, each year we take a group of 10 students, uh, five from the West Campus and five from the main campus, for a week-long educational trip to New York and D.C. Uh, we take the students to uh, other uh, network programs and major Evers. We take the students to culturally to cultural scenes in New York City Apollo. Uh, they take a tour of the Capitol. Uh, they visit the Schomburg Museum. So we take these students on uh, all expense paid trips to New York to kind of get a feel as a reward. You've done well this semester. You've you you you're you're a leader. So now here's some you know here's our thank you to you. You did all the right things. Coaches have said, hey, this student deserves to go on the trip. All that's been paid, we just ask you, you know, this is part of the benefit of being involved and plugged in, as we say, to the network. For those students who are really adventurous, we have a chess club. We have a lot of students who like to play chess. We have a trophy that you will earn, in, uh, depending on what's going on. Uh, we have a chess tournament once a month. Uh, we have the state champ for chess in Arkansas uh, that's helping us with this program. So. We do quite a bit with the chess club, so for those students that like chess, we have a chess club. We have a chess board set up in our office every day. So, you know, feel free to come by just to get in the game of chess. We have a debate team. That's something new we've started. We had our first debate uh, team last semester. And what that team did, uh, we had a team from the West Campus and one from the Main Campus. And they selected a topic. This is not something the network selected. We believe in letting our students become fully involved in what we do. So the students selected the topic of rising gas prices. The debate topic was the federal government is doing enough to regulate gas prices. One argued for the negative, one argued for the affirmative. The main campus came on with the trophy last spring. So this fall, we will be doing a similar thing on the west campus and the main campus. This time we're going to open it up to the entire student body. So it just won't be network students involved on the debate team. So. If you're interested in debating, please visit uh, Coach Moore on the West Campus or come down to room 105 uh, downstairs with the network and sign up and we'll work on that. Our first debate club meeting uh, will be the week of September 28th. We'll have a meeting on the West Campus and one on the Main Campus. So uh, for those of you in this video and you're interested, start looking for flyers around campus to come to those meetings. They'll be, on two they'll be at 2 o'clock on the main campus on Tuesday, and probably at 2 o'clock on Thursday on the uh, West Campus. For those students that are interested in poetry, or rap, or music, or arts, we have a poetry club. And it allows you to, to express yourself that way. We also have what we call a Freestyle Friday once a semester. In November of this year, we'll have a Freestyle Friday. It'll be a chance for students to showcase their talents, whether they rap, sing, have a painting, um, anything that's, that, that's, that's not vulgar. We we'll allow the students to come down and showcase their talents. It's a way of expression. It's kind of like, hey, this is what I do. Because they might not have that medium at any other time to express that, express that with. One other thing we also do to work with our students, we do college tours. Uh, we take tours normally in the fall and the spring. We visit the campuses uh, where our students transfer mostly to. We take the Department of Education information and look at where students from Plastic Tech normally transfer to within the state. Uh, we normally go to Henderson State University, Washita, uh, UAPB in Pine Bluff, UCA in Conway. We'll also go to Fayetteville occasionally in Arkansas Tech. So those students who sign up, work with the colleges we're going to normally on a Thursday or Friday. Uh, we have students. Uh, that, you know, interested in going depending on their major. Again, that's that's free as well. Uh, all our events are free as a matter of fact, so we don't ask the students to come out of pocket for anything because it's 
uh, as part of the things you pay in your fees when you enroll in Plastic Tech. One other thing we'll talk about today, we'll, uh, we'll talk about some of the success stories. We've had several students come through our, our program and become very successful. Uh, we have two students who are earned engineering scholarships to the U University of Arkansas. We have two students at Arkansas State University. One of them earned a scholarship there. We have, we've had six students earn the Shelby Brelow Transfer Scholarship to UALR. And those students have been awarded scholarships anywhere from $4,000 a year all the way up to $8,000 a year. We've also had students that have successfully completed their degree. Uh, we have one student that did a double major, uh, is doing uh, teaching and physical education, so kinesiology rather. We also have a student that will be enrolling in graduate school or has enrolled in graduate school at UAMS uh, in the fall as well. So, you know, so people are saying, well, how are your students doing? They're graduating, they're transferring. We have students who have earned their degrees in heating and air and have opened their own companies. Uh, Greg Reader is a fine example of that. Greg Reader was involved in the TRIO program, Network of Student Success. Greg graduated and now he's uh, owns his own heating and air company. So our students that come to the program, we do have some success stories for the program. We also have a calendar of events for what we do each semester. Uh, they're also on the web, but if you come by each office, pick up a copy, you'll see all the events we have. Um, tomorrow, we'll be bringing a uh, speaker in from New York uh, to speak to us about uh, being successful with the African American male. Uh, we have speakers throughout the semester. We've had Chef Jeff uh, speak to us. Uh, we've had um, three of the basketball mothers, the mothers of color, Cordis Williamson, uh, Derek Fisher, and Ronnie Brewer come speak to our students about uh, how do you handle a successful African American male. Uh, again, Kevin Powell is coming tomorrow, uh, a successful author, uh, a co author, uh, a book on Tupac and a book on uh, Biggie Smalls. So, again, you know, we, we, we try to bring uh, speakers here uh, that our students want to hear that can encourage them and promote uh, retention and graduation. Lastly, the thing I want to leave you with is the fact that our program uh, is designed to be successful. You know, the college's uh, motto is dedicate to your success. And that's kind of where we got our player on name at the network for student success. Our program is designed to make you successful. You know, there are things we put into place academically, uh, socially, to make sure that you're reaching your fullest potential. Our goal is to make sure, again, that you graduate. We think we have uh, enough things to make things fun, but we also have enough things to make sure that you work hard, that you achieve all your goals. Because if you aren't achieving all your goals, we aren't doing our job. So again, please stop by our office, check us out, see what we have going on, look at our calendar of events that we have in each office, join our chess clubs, uh, sign up as a, uh, to be a member of the network, to go on these college tours, Sign up, as a, sign up as a member just to be successful, get you a good coach, get you a good mentor, so that you, know, you can stay on track to graduate. And I thank you for your time today. And again, if you have any questions, come by our office. Again, we're located on the main campus, room 105. We're also located, located on the second floor of Little Rock West. Thank you.